Hello and welcome back to another episode of Firmament, probably. <laughs> Unless there's like not a lot left and I, I don't know because the last episode went long again. I've been bad, I've been so bad for the last like couple of weeks at keeping episodes <laughs> reasonably long. I'm sorry, I am. I'm trying to be better, it's just I can't right now, <laughs> I don't know why. I just always get stuck at the most inopportune time. I don't know. I'll try. I'll, I'll. I'll actually like focus on that and like try to intentionally set like harder limits and then just like end it. Whatever. Like it doesn't matter if we're in the middle of something. We'll just take a step back, end the episode, and then do that next time. We are the keepers. Sure, we are the keepers. It's true. All right. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what we're doing. This is the end of the embrace thing, so... Because those are those three... whatever. I don't know how anything works. Right, we're just getting up there. That makes sense. And then there's the third one. And then what? I don't know. I don't know. That was a really annoying puzzle in the, in the underwater ice area there, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it was that bad. I just was kind of... Yeah, I didn't want to end the episode <laughs> in the middle of it. Because I also knew it was going to be... Like, it's been a few days. And I didn't want to be in the middle of that and not knowing where I was or what I had done exactly. So... Number three. It's the embrace has now been awakened. Can it be true? Could this really have gone as I planned? You have kept the mission. Now the gateway in the swan will open and you can prepare for the assembly. Go. How did he? I also want to know how this works. Like, how did you know when? to talk to me because you never did this stuff because you, you so you, I don't know how this works I'm confused about the whole mentor whatever thing I don't know how it works it's confusing me like how did she time these messages to whenever something happened when she never did those things so she has no idea how it works or did she like just not like actually complete it but set everything up for me I don't know we were taught to joyfully anticipate the arrival. Tanner and two others arrived, and we were joyful beyond measure. They were powerful. We obeyed. They knew so much, but they were not patient with us, not kind as we were. We were not used to force. We were peaceful. Yes, we were peaceful, but we were not weak. It troubled us to serve someone as though they were greater than us. We were taught that all were equal. And then, suddenly, Oh, Marta killed one of them. Oh, that moment is burned in my mind. Quiet, Marta. She could not talk about worry. That day, nothing was ever the same. <sighs> Turner. And the other arrivals also changed. They took Marta and... <laughs> Panic engulfed the around. There was blood. There was death. 
It was... I... I have no words for it. Only twelve keepers remained. Of the arrivers, only Tana remained. Well. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I can't know what happened, but sounds like... The guy had it coming to me. That's the way I intend, or you know, decide to interpret it anyway. We are united. Mm, where do we go now? To the swan. Where's the best? I, I forgot everything. <laughs> it's my best way back. But yeah, I mean, like the whole, like, they, they felt like they were better than, you know, the other keepers and ordered them around and used force and order killed one of them and couldn't talk about why. I mean, that, like, does, you know, paint a picture for sure. So in my mind, anyway, Marta did what she had to do. assembly. We're doing the assembly. The arrival was when the others arrived. Has this always been like this? <laughs> I can never notice that. Why do they still like, they stand out so much these drag marks this time? I don't know. disproportionate response and then you know obviously the faction is building and those of bloodshed makes sense unfortunate that it went down that way but yeah yeah this does open okay I'm still I don't know I still have one more from this place, kinda, you know? Because it still feels like there should be more. And then there just isn't. Anyway, alright. I guess let's, let's do the thing. Let's not start too much, because I know how much there is actually left. There might be a lot. I still don't know. I was afraid, I suppose. He became our master. How so? And ruled us with a heavy hand. But he was the only one. We learned about masters. And their weapons. We were subdued. But if he was alone? Then lost. And Turner, rather than intent on the assembly and completing the mission, became intoxicated with his power. Our angry god. 
he would command and we would comply or die. His ever need. Only one of the arrivals could prepare for the assembly. Our mission was in peril, resting in Turner's distracted hands. I had lost hope. Okay. Wait, so, um, there were 12 keepers in one turn. Why didn't they, why didn't they just, like, get rid of him? They needed him for the mission? And his hands were distracted. But, like, I'm doing the mission. So what changed? I don't know, this is all still very confusing. Hmm, I mean, well, yeah, I don't know, let's see. Why do I have to go up on this side? I don't know what I think I do. Click. This is blocked off for no reason. I don't know. This one. Open. Okay, doesn't tell me where this goes. But I guess we're going someplace. We're going down. Now we're going up. And then a plan came to me. An ingenious plan. I refined it for many years. I became post Titana to use him. Mm -hmm. I made a wall in my mind for my own sand, befriending the monster for the greater good. I learned much. I wept. So, after many weeks, I told my comrade Jacques the truth that I had learned. I knew he would be afraid. He provoked the others, and they all lashed out at me. I convinced Turner to use his weapons to force them into the deep sea. I told Turner we could wake new ones from the threshold and I would mentor them to be more compliant as his servants. I gained Tanner's praise with this idea. He and his trust. Right up until I sedated him and placed him in the threshold as well. And so I was alone. Keeping and repairing. Not for days or weeks or even months, <laughs> but for years. Everyone was gone. The embrace could only be awakened, the assembly could only occur, only with the power of an arriver. But now Turner was in the deep sea. So I'm Turner. And you will learn the truth now. The truth of sleep. The truth of the mission. The truth of keeping. And the truth of Tanner. Our assembly and the ending. The threshold keeps the keepers. The cycle of keepers. Blank new keepers to be mentored. The seven year cycle. But I will not go to sleep 
I will keep my memories. I will not forget. Then, I, yeah, it must be Turner, right? Doors open though, that doesn't seem very <laughs> very wise. System override a hundred percent. Who <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> because they look like real people. Like the... I don't know. That kind of looks like Mox, doesn't it? I don't know. <laughs> this could be my career, I guess. I don't know. What I wait, this doesn't really make whatever, let's just go in, let's see what happens. What are we doing here? <laughs> but it doesn't let me look at these, right? I can't like It doesn't tell me anything about them. Again, it feels like that it should though. There should be like a, a name on these, if you ask me. Other stuff down here too. Atelier's inaugural, inaugural Keepers, 1910. So these are the inaugural Keepers. What does this do? Opens the door. Okay, another. Thing we can don. <laughs> baked beans, white tuna. I could eat. Those baked beans kind of look like coffee beans. <laughs> Maybe I want coffee more than I want beans. Yeah, it's my my locker. <laughs> it's my locker. Who's LTT? I don't know. Turner? Maybe. I chose I chose the customization options for this and these two titles of books. I chose those two. <laughs> Yay! All right. Is there nothing to interact with here, though? Again, like you know, I feel like some more some more detail. Why why is that? The hammer? <laughs> why is it sticking out? I can't do anything. Hmm. <laughs> can't read the books, can't have tea, can play chess, can smoke the cigar. play the guitar, you know, I can do anything. Just why? <laughs> okay, let's see what this is. Externally locked. Okay, the covering module hatch number two is externally locked, so we need to go out and open that, I guess. Looks 
like a door that should open. Anyway. I guess it's Don the Borak kid again. We're in space now, okay. And now, you have experienced the revelation that I had. The Grand Realms, I thought were everything or nothing but firmament, structures. But yet, they held everything dear to me, except my own memories. I have kept those. So we're on a spaceship then. <laughs> right. And those are the realms or something up there? That's wild. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> really? This doesn't connect? I just wanted to go the long way around to see if there was something hidden. I thought it would be. <laughs> That's so mean. That's so mean. That is so very mean. This time I have to go around the long way, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's mean. That is mean. Level design. I like that weird buzzing sound that walking you know makes here. Do it? I didn't feel like it did anything. I guess it does though. Yeah, okay. So this is our setup for me to like see this too, right? Like that's why this is like this. Why this had to be like externally unlocked and all that. But why don't you have like this open on both sides? <laughs> like that's just... I mean it's kind of fun to walk around here and the view is great and the relation is nice but like... There's also kind of nothing to do again, you know? That's fine. It's all fine. Can you imagine the first time I saw such a sight? No. I cannot describe what happened to my body. I did not think Tana would lie, but there's no preparation to face what one has never contemplated, never imagined. I was distraught and opened and offended and freed. 
I, I do not have words to describe to you. And now, I've returned here many times. And still, I do not know where the firmament ends. Can we ever? I don't know. I don't know. It's Dolphin. It's not like a water though. <laughs> there was no water there. Wait, how many were there? Two, four, six, eight. I can't count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, nineteen. So like seven died when twelve remained. So this whole thing started in nineteen ten. I'm, I'm still so confused. <laughs> so they built that spaceship. These guys built the spaceship. I don't know. Philadelphia Review. Two cents. What a rip -off. Philadelphia, Sunday, May 8th, 1910. The majestic starship Atlas embarks on a stellar odyssey. Firmament initiative ushers in a new era of human ingenuity and optimism. Can we like zoom in on this a little? Because it's like a bit hard to read. Anyway, Paris. May 7th, in a dazzling display of human brilliance and determination, the colossal starship Atlas is torn from the bonds of Earth, marking the commencement of a pioneering voyage to safeguard humanity's future. The Firmament Initiative, a grand coalition spearheaded by esteemed visionaries such as Andrew Carnegie, Marie Curie, okay, yeah, Nikola Tesla, that's what the other one looked like, uh, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, Jules Verne, and Karl Marx. So that one was Marx. Okay. <laughs> Seeks to propel mankind into a new epoch of cosmic exploration and preservation. The prodigious atlas, a vessel unlike any other, is designed to traverse the celestial expanses on a multi-generational journey after over a decade of monumental efforts. The so-called Great Lift triumphantly concluded using gargantuan rail rifles to thrust 16 million tons of indispensable cargo into the celestial abyss. Bearing the Greek name for incomplete, Atlas, the Atlas, <laughs> was assembled and commissioned under the unyielding hope that future advancements will augment and perfect the vessel as it journeys through the cosmos, gracefully propelled by a sophisticated steam propulsion system. <laughs> And massive sunlight sails, the Starship Atlas is poised to advance the marvels of technolo technologi technological progress. Within the Atlas, the Keepers inhabit massive realms, carefully preserving the ship's cargo. Sequestered and protected, these individuals adhere to a strict regimen, safeguarding their duties, integrity, the duties and integrity. The groundbreaking threshold sleep chamber sustains the Keepers' well-being, allowing extended periods of suspended restfulness. Newly awakened keepers, having freshly renewed minds, I would like to renew my mind, are re-mentored by experienced keepers, ensuring a seamless transfer of expertise across generations. The keepers' unwavering dedication is a testament to the Firmament Initiative's foresight, crucial to the Starship Atlas's mission success. The crew, a select group of skilled astronauts, will give their lives to maintain a watchful eye on the unknowing uh, keepers and the Atlas. Stationed in the ship's fore, they will be refreshed with new arriving members on rare occasions to ensure the mission's smooth progress. They will be refreshed with new arriving members. How? Anyway, 
<laughs> and read that again. As the journey nears its end, a final crew known as the Arrivers is expected to join the mission. The Keeper's lore has been embedded to inform them of this final arrival so the Keepers and crew can, at long last, join in preparing the Atlas for its ultimate destination, a magnificent and welcoming new Earth. So that's what we were supposed to do. But then didn't, we just like started ruling over like 12 people instead. That doesn't seem reasonable, honestly. It was all joined together in celebration of this historic event as we bear witness to the dawn of a new age of exploration and wonder. With the launch of the starship Atlas, humanity takes its first step towards the stars, and we stand united, ready to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Godspeed, starship Atlas, may you carry us towards a brighter tomorrow. Behold the Starship Atlas, a majestic marvel of human ingenuity embarking on a boundless voyage across the cosmos with advanced steam propulsion, initiative, intricate <laughs> solar sails and the revolutionary threshold sleep chamber system, housing the valiant crew and keepers on their grand multi-generational odyssey. As the world marvels at the great launch, grand launch of the Starship Atlas, we delve deeper into the astounding engineering feats and the brilliant minds that made this extraordinary journey possible. The Firmament Initiative, a collaboration of, and so on and so forth, success of his mission, state-of-the-art propulsion system, steam technology, high trained astronauts, oversee. Management and base recycling have been meticulously designed to support a life aboard the ship for the entirety of its voyage. Interesting. Incan embraces their new ruler. Who's a new king? And there's no, yeah, no second page. <laughs> we can look at it anyway. Look at these though. Permanent initiative synopsis. Revision, revision 77 version 1 on whatever, February 9th or September 2nd, I don't know, 1972. Introduction. Welcome to the Firmament Initiative, a multi generational, multinational, privately funded endeavor designed to. Can you stop blinking over there? To preserve and secure the future of humanity through interstellar exploration, your participation, dedication, and service to this monumental mission is acknowledged and appreciated. Classified. Please note that due to the nature and duration of the mission, this information is exclusively for the crew's um, perusal. Keepers must remain segregated, concentrating on the preservation of the cargo without distraction. Founder Andrew Carnegie, Marie Curie, Karl Marx, Nikola Tesla, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, Jules Verne, Starship Atlas, Background, Phase 1, The Great Lift, Phase 1 centered on sending crucial Earth based elements, minerals, flora, and fauna into orbit. The founders utilized their considerable resources to launch massive projectiles into orbit using 12 colossal rail rifles situated at various mountainous locations on Earth. Who had the resources though? Anyway, between 1895 and 1907 over 6,000 containers of cargo were transported into space, totaling more than 16 million tons, including technology for the assembly of the Starship. In 1910, the mission commenced with the Atlas gradually accelerating towards a nearby star system via rudimentary steam propulsion and solar sails. Phase 2, the augmentation. The Atlas initially possessed very limited acceleration cap capabilities. The mission's design relied on future advancements in space technology to enhance the star starship during its journey. But like how? It's like already, like it's leaving. How are you catching up? Like, but I don't know, whatever. The founders correctly anticipated that future technology would be able to catch up okay with and upgrade the atlas i mean sure for a while i guess i don't know potentially redirecting it to a different star system if a more suitable one was discovered but then why do you need this phone like if you later build one that's fast enough to catch up with this one and like change this one then you could just like launch it later i guess <laughs> i don't know like at that point this whole thing is obsolete I guess. Like the that doesn't make sense as a premise, right? Like I'm you know, I'm starting to walk across the country assuming that cars will be invented and then later like a car is gonna come catch up with me and I'm gonna sit in the car instead. 
drive the car and why even start walking like there's no like I don't gain anything because <laughs> I you know I didn't reach my destination and the new technology was fast enough to catch up to me so it could just like there's no point in me having walked all the all the way that I walked until the car put up with me that, there's no there's no point <laughs> Anyway, uh, the timing frequency of such augmentations were uncertain, but attachment and docking ports were incorporated in anticipation, the embrace and the arrival. The Starship Atlas features artificial gravity generated by the vessel's rotation. To create the required gravity, cargo realms are positioned further from the center of rotation, resulting in a structurally weaker vessel susceptible to stress during intense acceleration. Consequently, the ship was also designed to retract and secure the cargo realms during periods of high acceleration. It was expected that this would only be necessary uh, deceleration for arrival or for a final upgrade providing unanticipated thrust. The keepers were prepared for these events with a narrative combining the arrival of trained personnel required to engage the embrace and the actual arrival of the starship Atlas as final destination. Okay. Personnel, the keepers. Acknowledging that a journey to even the closest star system could take centuries or millennia, the founders designed the ship's maintenance to be performed by keepers. Keepers reside in large cargo realms, rotating in and out of sleep chambers that enable them to live for the mission's entire duration. The sleep process gradually purges memories, starting from the most recent. The Sosar Keepers are limited to a maximum sleep duration of 12 years before being awakened and re retrained. Mentors facilitate the retraining process by passing on their knowledge and preparing for sleep. To minimize social complications among keepers, a tightly controlled and rigorously matched protocol was established. Keepers are not informed about the mission's nature and are in instead taught that they existed within three small realms, comprising their entire universe. Questioning was discouraged, and all necessary answers were provided through strict cultural indoctrination. The crew, a small group of trained astronauts, is accommodated. The ship's four. The crew's primary responsibility is to remotely monitor the keepers and ensure the smooth operation of the mission during launch and subsequent upgrades. The crew has access to threshold suspension chambers, but their usage is limited to approximately one year. Okay. Suspension periods exceeding two years pose memory loss risks, which could comprom compromise the crew's effectiveness. Consequently, the crew members are expected to live out their lives in support of the mission. It is of utmost importance that the crew remain separated from the keepers to prevent interference with the keepers' strictly dictated culture. The only exception to this segregation is the arrivals. As the mission progresses, it is anticipated that the frequency of upgrades will increase due to advancement in space travel engines and speeds. The final stages of the mission's mission will likely occur rapidly necessitating the arrival of a final crew known as the arrivals. The keepers' lore predicts the driver of this group who will require access to the realms to prepare the ship for acceleration deceleration. Only member, members of the crew, specifically the arrivals, are authorized to prepare the Starship Atlas in this manner. Notes or note, detailed information and specific procedures for all aspects of crew, tasks and protocols can be found in Volume 1 for 22 of the Firmament Initiative Protocol and Procedure. Digital versions are available on disk A2 end. And then what else do we have? A database search. Crew names Turner. What are we found? Select from Turner. Arna Arnardo. <laughs> S. Turner Lewis Dharma. Turner Maris D T. Turner. Susiana. Turner. Wiley Barr. More. Two, Louis Dharma, TLD, yeah, that's what he had in there, right? Employment history, 2100-2105, ends in Class C, Nexus Protectorate Corporation, Karachi Incorporated Division. And then from 2106 to 2115, Corporate Security Office of Firmament Industries, Eastern Field Storage. And then from 2110 to 2117, Lieutenant, junior grade, firmament industries, 
Industries incorporated military police, Ensign Kasi Space Force Division. And then from 2118 until the present, which I don't know what date it is. Uh, Ensign Firmament Industries incorporated security and amelioration duty. Cruise ship Nicola, lottery draft, Adelis recon and augments. Carceral record. In June of 2105, bias motivated offense level 2, 3 terms served. In September of 2109, insubordination level 1, 2.4 terms served. February of 2116, misconduct level 3, 9 terms served. And in December of 2117, contract breach level 4, 1 term served. Why, why send someone with like a criminal record <laughs> to space? I don't know. I have no one to share my joy with, and so I write. What one does? Everything I had known has turned into nothing. My world has been replaced by truth, a world I scarcely knew existed until I realized I needed it. Upon discovering this truth of the firmament initiative, I now find myself privy to a new perspective, and what turn a card freedom. Freedom? My entire reality, have I ever pondered the existence of such a word or concept? What I once believed to be limited to the small realms I lived in is in fact a grand stage, encompassed by an infinite cosmos, what wonders. I've been granted the privilege of gazing upon the stars, and as I do, I cannot help but feel this overwhelming sense of s'more. But this kind of s'more is a feeling of such joy. I am humble, I am inspired. My tiny world is a minuscule part of a thing called a universe. It is astonishing to think that the entire mission, everything I have known and believed, was designed to protect our future and the future of all humans. As I learn more about this grand endeavor, I am filled with hope and excitement for the untold possibilities that lay before all of us. This is almost hard to believe or fathom, and yet my joy is dampened when I think about such a great deception that was considered necessary and done to me. Okay. I don't think it was necessary at all. <laughs> A2 level 34%, O2 level 54%. Excellent condition. That doesn't sound excellent. What did I say? Oh, that's Curie Vale. That's Schulston. Schul Schulstone? <laughs> Schulvale. I don't know. What's the last one called again? I forgot. Andrew Carnegie, I guess. Lock, lock, password. I want to hack all that stuff. How many hatches are there? Well, that's it. <laughs> realm embrace sequence complete. So we tucked in all the realms. They were like out there and we like, yeah, bent them all in. So we can decelerate without them like breaking off, I suppose. But now what? Where do I go? I can go that way. Can I go this way? Wait, what are these? These are like life pod kind of cryogenic freeze chamber thingies? I'm not sure.
scanning. Biosignature confirmed. Turner, Lewis Donald. Yes. Earth equivalent date, 2231-3-17. Okay, March 17th. The United Earth Space Agency sends its sincere gratitude and greetings, Ensign Turner. Mission protocol requiring your presence and approval is now satisfied. Thank you for your preparations to Firmament Starship Atlas. No further human intervention is required. All additional assembly, preparations, and flight control will be handled autonomously by me. Final full engine upgrades to Starship Atlas now commencing. Stand by for space folding and transport to the Tau Ceti system. I was never given a choice. The firmament protected, restrained, and uh, used us. You understand that now? I do. And I have not given you a choice. I also true. placed you in the threshold seven years ago. You slept and forgot. I sat alone and remembered. You woke up, I lied to you, and used you. You see how it feels? You arrived and pulled back the curtain of this monumental illusion for me. Now, I thought I knew so much, but you astonished me with how small my world was. And as you held my awe, my veneration in your hand, you closed your fist around us. We were like children, and you tore our small world apart. I have thought of this moment often as I waited. I wish I was alive now to see your face. There is a part of me that hopes you are enraged. Oh, it's not reasonable, I know. These violent thoughts never get us very far. You were our god. And then, you were our monster. Do you feel some kind of remorse now? <laughs> Can there even be atonement without choice? I. It doesn't matter. At the very least, I used you to provide the way home for the keepers. My comrades, my family. But now, maybe you can do more than just the very least. One choice remains for you, and I will not beg a man such as you, but I will ask. Do something good with this second life you have been given. Remember the keepers, those you looked down on and mocked, those you erased. I forced you to travel their path to learn their names, understand what they accomplished, miracles. And you, now you have become the most important keeper of all, the keeper of all these memories. You sit on the verge of the awaited destination. A new world, a new home. When you arrive, you can choose to tell these stories that only you now know. 
You can tell the tales of the keepers of this grand spaceship. And we worked so hard to save all of this, including even you. I do. Starship Atlas has now been upgraded and is fold engine enabled. Prepare for acceleration and full jump to the Tau SETI system. Any questions you may have will be answered upon arrival, which will occur in approximately 7.4 hours. New life awaits you and your fellow Atlas comrades on planet Pharma. Thank you for your service to the Firmament Initiative, Ensign Turner. That did not go the way I expected it to go at all. Um, and I still think <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't really work. Like for it to make sense, there has to be some way. But yeah, I guess you have to kind of magic that in, right? It has to be something you can like teleport to the ship, and then it makes sense to send the ship out and then teleport it, like teleport to it and upgrade it, right? Because otherwise it's too far away, and even with like better engine, it would take long to catch up. Otherwise, you don't need to send it out because you could just send like the Ford engine ship, which is just like jumping the air. You don't need all of this, but maybe you need this in order to get the other stuff developed because you have. But like, I feel like that. I don't know. It's like a bit weak in my mind. Anyway. I really like the, the the effect there at the end of the hologram standing up um, from the skeleton of our, our mentor there. What's her name? Did we ever learn her name? Because I don't know. I thought we did at the start, but I don't think we did. I don't know. I never went back to look. And the book, like it wasn't really signed, right? It was just like, I'm not sure. Anyway, I mean, I did, I did like the the plot overall, though. Like this weird group of people who work together to send like a steam engine spaceship to a new Earth. It's like it's a really fun, <laughs> it's a fun story. Um, even if I don't really know how much sense it makes. Like logically. And then also, I mean, it's interesting to think about, like, I, you know, I did some bad stuff in my past here, but, like, I don't remember any of it. Like, all my memories have been erased. So, can I even really be, like, responsible for, for the things that I've done at this point? Anyway. And so Carnegie was there for the money, right? And Marie Curie was like a scientist, sure. Tesla was a scientist too, that makes sense. Marx is a bit weird, but I mean it like it does kind of like the horror. <laughs> I mean it was like a bunch of like weird communist stuff in like the, the realms for sure, the horror. 
be able to keep us and you know yeah I don't know what did Chil Van have to like how did he contribute to he like he and Marx like came up with the lore for the keepers I don't know <laughs> I don't know Tsiolkovsky I'm somewhere in there Where's my name? I want to see my name. Uh, I didn't see it. It was there though. <laughs> it must have been. It must have been. Wait, there's so many names though. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm still coming up then? I wasn't in a high tier, I was in a low tier, so maybe that was like the people who paid more first, because it went fast. <laughs> Let's see. J, okay. Lots of J names, huh? Wow, he has a ton of J names. Still so many Johns, wow, <laughs> so many Johns. <laughs> Some Justins. All right, K, we're getting there, L. M. There's like no time, Megan, Miker, Midlamba, <laughs> Nathan, okay, N. I, it is already gone again. <laughs> too fast it's too fast I think I'm in there with like no live clover I'm pretty sure I didn't give him my real name <laughs> and even if it is in there you're not gonna like you're not gonna find it there's, there's too many names <laughs> and I was looking at the end because of no live clover which I think is what um, what I selected for the credits if I could select I don't know I don't remember it's, it's too long ago Way too long ago. Some weird code down there. <laughs> and some nice dedications. Do we get like one more thing or is th this is it? This is it, all right. So I guess that is it for Firmament. Which, I, yeah, I mean, so there are, I think it's like a mixed bag, honestly. I think visually, it's a very beautiful game. I like the sound design, I like the music. It's not very ambient music. It's not a lot of like music that like pushes more into the foreground, but that's fine. I wish that like the plot was handled differently somehow, though. Because I I feel like I always lacked like m reason to do like it was just like, yeah, it was not enough. I feel like it was not enough to drive me as a character through all of that, and a lot of the stuff that I was doing was just never. I feel like there could have just been some some sound bites where it's like. This is where this happened, and now you have to like do this or something. It doesn't have to just be this explicit, but we were just like in a weird factory, and then we were doing things for some. Like it wasn't that clear. Like sure, like in the end, yes, we were draining the water so we could walk into the middle and drive up the elevator and and engage the embrace. But that was never really. Like it never was like, oh, we can't get this water out of here because of this, and then now we need to do these steps. It was always just like, I don't know what we're doing. I guess we're just making more battery acids or whatever and then pour, pour you know then like pouring it down there and then 
okay, now we can refill this water thing and then that drains the pool and then now we can walk in there. But that wasn't really, it was never, right, it was never like the goal and then we worked towards it. It was always just like, oh, let's mess around here. And then, okay, now that happened to help me out here. Which I feel like is like, you know, suboptimal. Um, and yet, Tsiolkovsky, I just looked him up. <laughs> A Russian-Soviet rocket scientist who pioneered astronautics. One of the founding fathers of modern rocketry and astronautics. All right. That makes some sense. And uh, yeah, some of the puzzles I think also just weren't all that interesting, you know? And I feel like, I don't know, I mean, missed stuff, it's never been like very like gameplay driven, it's always been more of like the, the story, which is like fine, it's just like a different type of, like if you compare it to something like, I don't know, we're, we're like, like Lingo or um, like Baba is You, where like the whole, it just, it, there's no story really, there's no plot, there's not, there are no characters. There's no lore really, it's all just solving puzzles and then the focus is much more on the quality of those puzzles and like the learning curve and all of that. And here it's just all like, like the, yeah, it's a bit all over the place in terms of like difficulty and like, a lot of the difficulty com just comes from the weird, like the obscurity of it all, right? Like it's not, it's never clear what you're actually doing <laughs> in a lot of places. Anyway. And there weren't really, like, yeah, like, there wasn't really ever, like, a, oh, this is, like, how do we figure this out? It was always just, like, what am I trying to do accomplish? That was, like, the only, like, real source of, like, difficulty. Um, in my mind. Anyway. And then I feel like the world just needed some more love. Like there could have been more details, more like smaller things, like things we can pick up along the way. You know, just like little things, just like to make it seem more alive in a way. So I don't know. I like this sort of steampunk, you know, weird retro futuristic, whatever. I don't know. It's kind of it's a fun theme. Um, it's just a shame, like it never felt very natural to to progress through the puzzles and through the, the different stages of the story. It always just felt like you're just struggling with it. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's my experience, anyway. But it is like it is. It is beautiful for sure, and I do appreciate the like the sort of ambition in the in the story and in the you know in the way it tells its story too. So anyway, I guess that's it for for a moment. I'm 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 happy with this. Like it's not like my you know favorite game of our time um not my favorite puzzle game not my favorite cyan game i don't know what my favorite cyan game is i do remember enjoying riven a lot and i thought abduction was like really good for like a long while and then kind of fell a little flat towards the end maybe <laughs> um I think this has a better ending though than abduction, but like the, the journey was like less impressive maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Either way, yeah, that's it for, for a moment. Um I hope you still enjoyed this. Um and um yeah, let me know if you saw my name. <laughs> and I'll see you soon with something else. Something new, something old, we'll see. I'm not sure. Bye-bye.